Welcome to uh, MySQL webinar series from uh, javapassion.com or jpassion.com. Uh, today's topic is data modeling, and this is going to be our last topic of this webinar series. All right, so let's start with the presentation. It's going to be so much short presentation and short uh, hands-on lab today, so we'll be done maybe 20, 25 minutes, even actually less than that. So these are the topics that we are going to go over in the presentation. So first topic is what is and why data modeling? As you have may have as you may have guessed, uh, data modeling is something like uh, object-oriented design in Java programming or any other programming language. It's an act of exploring the structures and their relationship between uh, data tables and their contents. So why data modeling? Again, same reason that you might want to do object-oriented design in programming language while writing programs. It provides abstraction, it provides transparency, it provides effectiveness. Abstraction, basically, a large body of design can be abstracted out so that it's easier and economical and flexible to work with those large body of the design from the abstraction. Transparency provides uh, designers with the uh, perception uh, of actually representing the, again, the complex ideas can be in fact the, uh, represented in abstractions and uh, it actually provides the, uh, the uh, its designers with the perception of the truthfulness of the design. Uh, effectiveness, uh, again, is a, these are somewhat kind of similar ideas here. So basically, you can do your job accurately, reliably, and more economically by using data modeling instead of actually using tables directly. So let's move on to the steps of data modeling. So you identify, so you know, suppose if you want to actually build your data model uh, for the first time, you identify your entity types, uh, for example, um, the school or student. Uh, so some programming language is called domain uh, domains. And then you identify attributes. What are the attributes of a particular entity type? Meaning what are the attributes uh, of a student entity type? And then you apply naming conventions. And then you identify relationships among these entity types. And then you assign keys. And then you do normalize. So these are somewhat obvious steps for data modeling. Relationship. So you can specify relationship between entity types as one-to-one -one identifying relationship or one-to-one non-identifying relationship. Or it could be one-to-many or it could be many-to-many. So let's talk about the difference between identifying relationship versus non-identifying relationship. So identifying relationship means that child table cannot be uniquely identified without a parent. So a good example is, for example, joint table. So if you happen to build many-to-many -many relationship uh, between two uh, entity types, and then there has to be a joint table, and that joint table cannot be uniquely identified without the parent, meaning the other, the, uh, the entity types. Non-identifying non relationship, uh, the child table can be, uh, can be identified independently of the parent. So example is in this case, so we have in fact a film table on the left here, and then you have a category, film, uh, the, uh, the category uh, table here, and then we have a joint table in between. So this is the uh, film category joint table. So here uh, you can think of these two guys have uh, not identifying relationship, and these two guys have identifying relationship. Again, this joint table cannot be present without identifying their parent. In this case, the film or category. Non-identifying relationship, in this case, a language and film. So language table and film table can be existent without actually having uh, the identification of the other table. Many to many relationship we just talked about here. So in this case, a film can have many categories and categories can have a many films. So films and categories have a many to many relationship and uh, they that many-to-many -many relationship is constructed through this joint table in the middle. 
Normalization is an effort to reduce data redundancy. So information is stored in one place and one place only. And it's basically to reduce the possibility of inconsistent data. And uh, it could result in performance degradation, however, because you have to deal with the multiple tables. Data modeling tools. So there are many, but we're going to actually work with the MySQL Workbench. So here you can create and manage data models uh, in MySQL Workbench. You can perform forward and reverse engineering. So we have done reverse engineering. Uh, the uh, We covered reverse engineering in our Workbench, uh, the webinar last week, or actually several weeks ago. And you can compare and synchronize the schemas, and you can also have some reporting features from uh, Workbench. So, so the uh, as we talked about in MySQL Workbench webinar uh, several weeks ago, my work uh, the Workbench provides SQL development, data modeling, and server administration. So we're going to actually focus on data modeling here. All right. So that is the end of the presentation. So let's actually do the hands-on lab. So exercise one is opening existing EER. EER. EER stands for Enhanced Entity Relationship Model. So basically EER stands for model uh, models. So we're going to actually open existing models. And the second exercise, we are going to create a brand new model. And uh, then third exercise is we are going to create a model from uh, existing SQL uh, scripts. Okay. So here we are going to actually open existing uh, the uh, model and the existing model is provided in the hands-on lab and that's called the uh, secular so the model file is uh, has the extension of mw M, uh, mwb okay so basically i have already uh, the uh, i have already uh, the opened it okay so we're going to just double click it All right, so this is the model that you get from the uh, that database. Okay, so as you can see, you have uh, in this case four distinct uh, layers. Okay, and you can perform some zooming here, like this. And uh, then, suppose if you have very large, then you know the the uh, workbench provides this rectangle, uh, which you can actually kind of provide uh, the regions uh, of uh, the uh, the uh, the model. Okay. Now, if you see this model uh, relationship, so here this is a one-to-one -one non-identifying relationship. So this is the dot 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 relationship here. Okay, and that uh, this is the uh, one-to-many non-identifying relationship, and this is the uh, identifying relationship one-to-one, -one. and that uh, this is identifying relationship one-to-many, and that uh, this is the many-to-many uh, uh, -many identifying relationship. Okay. And uh, this is the uh, uh, yeah this is actually placing a relationship with the existing columns. Okay. All right, so you can actually use uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, these icons to build up the relationship. Okay. All right, so that is what we did. We just opened the uh, you know secular uh, the uh, uh, model file that is provided in hands-on lab, and uh, we just take a look at the uh, the models uh, the uh, and we performed some zooming. And uh, then we studied the relationship. All right, the second exercise is that we are going to create a brand new model uh, from scratch. Okay, So we are going to create the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, brand new model. So we're going to actually go to uh, home here. And then we are going to create new model. Okay. So then we are going to uh, add a diagram. So here we are going to create a table. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, brand new table. So you click it and then you place it here. Uh, that somehow the uh, workbench does not allow you to drag. So don't try to drag it. Okay. So I tried to drag it the first time, but it, the dragging doesn't work. You just click it and then you click it here. Okay. And uh, then you can just uh, double click it to name it. Maybe I'm going to just name it as book or something like that. Okay. All right. And uh, then you can add some columns. Okay. So you can just add columns, uh, book ID. 
Facebook ID and the Zint. And this is a primary key. And this is the uh, not null. Okay. And then you can add a few more uh, the uh, columns. Okay. So I'm going to just use the uh, documentation to uh, explain the steps that you might want to do. So we just create a table and we just name it name it as a book and uh, then we're just adding uh, these columns so book id int author publisher year published so why don't i do that okay so author publish and book uh, year published so here author and uh, you can select the data type here okay and uh, publisher publish sure and uh, date published and here we're going to select year okay all right so that's the way you are going to create a table okay so we did that yeah, so it's year published, not date published. And then we can add another uh, the uh, table, in this case, category table. Okay, so we're going to actually category ID and category name. So we'll actually have another table. Click here. Let me just move this, move it down. Well, I'm going to just move, move it up here and move up here. And uh, we'll just say category. 